I want to show you another type of hedge. This one is a stock index futures hedge. And the best way to think about this is just to work through an example. Suppose you have a portfolio of stocks. You know, perhaps it's uh, November or December, you'll be buying a house in March or April. And so you're going to use that stock portfolio to for your down payment on your house. So you're worried about price falling. This isn't the case where, well, I can sit and wait it out. I need that money. And I have some options. I could sell the stocks right now. I could hedge with a futures contract. I can also hedge with options. Right now, I'm, I'm not going to discuss the hedging with options. Why wouldn't you want to sell the stocks right now? Well, if your portfolio has a lot of capital gains, that is, the price has gone up a lot, if you sell it in November or December, you're going to have to pay the capital gain ta gains tax in April of the following year. If you can postpone selling your stocks until the following year, until January 1st, January 2nd, I guess January 2nd, January 1st, the exchange would be closed, you can postpone paying those capital gains, uh, the capital gains tax for, for another year, okay, which has a big advantage. So you could just wait. But what if, the, what if uh, the price of the stocks goes down? Well, one thing you can do is hedge with futures. So because you're worried about the price falling, you should use um, a stock index futures contract, and you should sell that contract. And the contract you're likely to use is the S&P 500 contract. Now, when you're hedging the portfolio, we need to estimate the volatility of the portfolio relative to the futures contract. If you watch the video before this where I did a short-term interest rate hedge and I talked about hedging a commercial paper issue. The commercial paper issue was 180 days. The euro dollar futures contract was 90 days. It turned out that it was twice as sensitive, the, the commercial paper was twice as sensitive to a change in interest rates as the futures contract, so you had to double the number of contracts. The same holds true here. So how do you measure your portfolio's volatility relative to the futures contract? Well, beta is a measure of volatility for each stock relative to the S&P 500. Usually beta is estimated using the S&P 500 as the benchmark. So if you have a beta equal to 1, your stock is about as volatile as the S&P 500 index. If you have a beta of 2, it means it goes up twice as fast and it goes down twice as fast. So you have a portfolio of stocks and what you need is the portfolio beta. And the portfolio beta can simply be calculated as a weighted average of the betas of the stocks in the portfolio. So if you have 10 stocks in your portfolio and you know your, your portfolio is worth $10,000 and $3,000 is invested in IBM stock, well, 3,000 divided by 10,000, IBM makes up 30% of your portfolio. If Microsoft is you have $2,000 worth of Microsoft stock, that makes up another 20% of your portfolio. So you would take 30% times IBM's beta plus 20% times Microsoft's beta, et cetera, et cetera, to get the portfolio beta. All right, so now let's just look at the example and we'll see how we can use that number to adjust the number of contracts. So here it is, it's January 3rd, your portfolio manager, you're going to be liquidating the portfolio on March 30th. You've ac accumulated some profits and you want to protect those profits. Okay? But portfolio managers are very good about doing that. Why? Because their bonuses are based on profits on a certain date. So oftentimes they will hedge their position. So. We have a number of stocks here. This is an old example, so some of these some of these companies may not even exist anymore. But here are the prices. Uh, the price of Federal Mogul is thirty-six dollars. You have ninety-four hundred shares. So if you take thirty-six, multiply it by ninety-four hundred, you have three hundred and thirty-eight thousand four hundred dollars worth of Federal uh, Federal Mogul. Martin Marietta, 
is $36 a share as well. You have 8,000 shares of that. Multiply the two together, you have $288,000 worth of Martin Marietta. And you do that for all the rest of the stocks. Add up the value of all this, these stocks. This is the total value of your portfolio, $2,369,650. So what are the weights? Well, Federal Mogul is 338000 400 of the 2,369,650. So if you take this number, the 338,400, and divide it by 2,369,650, you should get 0.143 or 14.3%. Okay. Likewise, you would take Martin Marietta, the 288,000 divided by the 2,369,650 makes up 12.1%. Okay. You can do this quite easily in a spreadsheet. The betas, you could look those betas up perhaps on Yahoo Finance or some other website. And so you have the betas um, for the portfolio. So now what we need to do is we need to compute the portfolio beta. So that's going to be 0.143 times 0.8 plus 0.121 times 1.25, etc. Okay, so you take the weight times the beta plus the weight of the second stock times its beta. I think I have that on the next slide here, and I didn't do it, but the calculation gives us 1.065. So it's slightly more volatile than the um, S&P 500. Now, the S&P 500 futures price at this point in time is 955.25. Okay, that's the index value. And the way contracts the size of a contract is you take the index value and you multiply it by 250. Okay, they have this multiplier. I believe it used to be 500, but the size of the index got so big that it made the contract too large. So they made this multiplier smaller. They made it 250. So your contract size here for the futures contract is 238,812. So how do you decide on the number of contracts to use? You take the size of your portfolio and you divide it by the size of the futures contracts. Okay, so just looking at it, you, you figure you need about 10, right? Because you're hedging something that's essentially 10 times larger than the, than the size of the futures contract. Okay, then you multiply it by the beta and you get 10.57. You have to round up. So you're going to use 11 futures contracts in this case. So if you had a beta equal to 2, you'd be using close to 20 contracts. If you had a beta of 1.5, you'd be using somewhere around 15. This isn't quite 10 times this, but you can see that you adjust the number of contracts based on beta. Just like in the, in the uh, short-term interest rate hedge, we, we adjusted the number of contracts based on the ratio of the two durations, which told us the interest rate sensitivities. I think I have uh, some actual solution here as to how this whole thing worked out. On March 30th, some of these stocks fell in price. Remember, these two were $36, so you lost some money here. Your portfolio has gone down in value, 2148812 but you've hedged. Okay, so you lost, this was the original value of your portfolio, 2,369,650. So, you know, minus what it's worth on March 30th, you've lost 220,000. But the futures price has gone down. Remember, you shorted the futures contract. Okay, you sold it. And so now, the price per contract is 217,320 before it was 238,000 or so. Remember, you sold uh, 11 contracts. So what's your profit? Your profit is the difference between the sell price and the price you buy it back for. You make 236412 on your futures position. And so it turns out, actually, it's quite good. Again, another example where the hedge, where the futures profit actually exceeds the loss on the stock portfolio. Now again, it's not always going to be this case. It may be the case that you, instead of losing 236,000, I'm sorry, instead of losing 
um, whatever it was before, uh, this this minus this, you wind up you wind up um, losing not quite as much. So your profit here might have been two hundred and seventeen thousand dollars. So instead of losing two hundred twenty thousand eight thirty eight, you lose you know twelve or thirteen thousand. But at any rate, the futures are going to move in the opposite direction because you shorted this, you owned this, so if the price went down, you'd lose money on your stock position, you'd make money on your futures position, you're going to offset some of the loss. In this case, you did even better, you actually made a profit. But again, that's not the goal of hedging. The goal of hedging is to reduce your risk, and that's what this did. Okay? If you hadn't hedged, you would have lost $220,838.